All right, let's take a look at another sign here. And this, as you can see, this is a pretty simple sign and there's not all that much going on, but I really wanna focus a lot of my time on this talking about what's going on here. And if, you, if you've learned a little bit about Korean irregulars, this, this might be a really, really interesting video for you. First, let me just tell you what's going on around this. So here I have a sign that says, Kyotong Ane, Kyotong Ane, and Kyotong, this just means traffic, traffic, and ane is a, is a, a word, anehada, anehada, I'll write that up here, anehada. This means sort of to guide or to inform or something like that. And, and the noun form of that would just be sort of guidance. And ane, if you've been following my sign videos, you, you notice that you actually see this a lot. And if you ever walk around Korea or drive around Korea, you'll probably see that you actually see this quite often in, in on Korean signs because very often you'll say, okay, something, 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 ane. And that's basically saying this sign is going to be telling you about what you need to follow or, or guiding you on what you need to do about this particular thing. So it's basically, as you can, as you can gather, it's, it's basically a, a traffic guidance or make sure you're aware of this particular information. At the very bottom here, I'll just say this very quickly because it doesn't really relate to, to this sentence. So I'll just say it as a, as a one-off thing. Chonchani means slowly, slowly, slowly. And this is a very, very common thing that you see, not just in signs, but it's a very common word that, uh, that's often used in, in Korean speech. Sometimes in signs, you don't really see, like, for, for example, this word is not the most common word in Korean speech, but chonchani is very, very common. For example, if you were going to tell somebody, go slowly, you'd say, You'd say chan chan hi ka, or some, or maybe you might have to say a, a more uh, polite way of saying that. But you that would be one way of saying that. And you could say go slowly, or maybe you'd say walk slowly. You could say chan chan hi, and you can say walk after that. Anyways, this word here, chan bang. This is it, it's actually a fairly difficult word, and it it means in front or ahead. Ahead would probably be the best way. And this is a very common word, not in speech, because it's it's a quite difficult word, but um, it's very common on signs. And as you can imagine, if you're driving, or I guess if you're walking, and actually I actually snapped this, this picture when I was biking on a bike path, but you'll very commonly see this to say, up ahead, this is something that's happening. And as you can imagine, you might say, up ahead, there's, uh, up ahead, there's, you know, uh, uh, an, inter an, an intersection, or up ahead there's uh, falling rocks, or up ahead there's uh, a, a quick turn, or up ahead there's some sort of danger that you need to be aware about. So in those situations, you'd see this word, and I want to sort of break down where this word is is coming from here. Chun, chun is actually, a, 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 this just this syllable alone is probably something you've seen a lot of. I'll show you what the hanja of this word, I'll, I'll do it up here, because I probably want to use most of this space just to talk about this word. The, the Hanja or, or the Chinese character for Tan looks looks something like this. Looks something like that. And you're probably not aware, you probably, if you're looking at this word, you probably might think, okay, well, that's interesting, Chan. But this is, is the same Chan that you would use to indicate that you do something before something else. And actually, I, if you've read up to lesson um, 24 on my lessons, it's the same Chan that you would see in all of these situations. If you're talking about two seconds ago or, or a certain amount of time ago, or if you are, want to indicate that you do an action before something, you can use this as well. So bef before this action happened, before my friend came, before a particular action, this is actually the same chun that we're using. And if you imagine sort of before and in front sort of mean the same thing, because in both cases, if if you imagine my what my head is thinking right here, in both cases, if you think before, well, there, there's something, some object here, and if I'm standing here, this is before before I am. This is me. This is before this object, or it's in front of this object, and they both, in general, mean the same thing. But it, sometimes it would either sort of, in this case, it refers to something ahead, or something it might be something before. It depends on the particular word that it's talking about. Now, other words that you might see this in, for example, is you might see this in the word in the word ojun. Now. Oh, the, the Chinese root of this actually means noon. And if you say oh chan, that's well before or in front of noon. And if you, if you know what this word means, this means the morning. 
the morning. And again, Chan is referring to it's, well, it's before, it's before, or it's in front of, it's in front of this particular thing, which happens to be noon. The opposite of this, of course, which is not related to Chan, but it's related to this word, and I'm getting on a tangent, which I always get in, into in my videos, would be ohu, ohu. And again, o is the same o that we see here, but it actually, you know, o means noon, and hu means after. So if you say o chan, you're referring to the morning, because we know now, we know the meaning of this particular character. But o hu, as you can imagine, if you've learned this word before, maybe you haven't, it, it means the afternoon. So anyways, all that explaining just gets me to the fact that chan, chan refers to before something or, or ahead of something. And Pang, Pang, I'll show you the, the Hanja of, of this character over here. And again, everybody's always going to get mad at my Hanja, but it looks something like that. And this, this word here refers to direction. Direction. And if you, put, if you put both of these together, basically this is just saying, in the direction that's in front of you, and that, that very, very simply, just if you put both of these together, the, the direction in front of you, that very simply translates to ahead. And I would actually recommend that you don't use this word in your everyday speech, especially if you're a beginner, and even if you're not a beginner, even if you're a more of an advanced learner. I'd, I'd suggest that instead of using this word, you use the more common word, which you probably already know, as up. And I asked a Korean person, I said, well, why, why on the sign would you always see this instead of this? And the answer simply was, well, this is a more difficult word. And I don't know why, but it's Korean people, and I guess maybe it's the same in English, but we tend to use more, I guess, I guess, you know, f formal, I don't want to say formal, but more sort of official speech or official words on signs. So instead of, instead of saying this on the sign, they would, they would use a more official word that's rooted more on hanja than something like this, which is not. All right, now that we've finished all of this stuff that's going on here, we know that we have some sort of traffic information or traffic guidance to follow in front of us, and we are going to have to go slow. And you can probably guess what's going to be happening here based on this this arrow, this arrow here. And let me just talk, first just say that if you might look at this sign and say, well, this is a four-syllable word here. This is the first syllable, second syllable, third syllable, fourth syllable. Well, actually, there should be a space here. And you sort of see this a lot in signs or even on official signs like this, where there should be a space and there isn't a space, or sometimes vice versa, there shouldn't be a space, but there is. And I don't know who designed this sign, but this is actually, doro is, is a word that means road, and there's nothing all that difficult about that. That's just a word that means road. But this is something very, very interesting that I want to talk about, because we can talk about this and, and what's sort of going on here and what's going added to it, because it's very, very interesting. So let, let me talk about what's going on, on with this. This is actually a verb, a verb. And this addition here, this addition, and I'll... It's you add this or this, depending on depending on if this particular verb, if the stem ends in a vowel or ends in a consonant. So, anyways, this ends in a consonant, so you're gonna have to add this one. But let me actually talk about what's going on here. The verb that we have here, and you, this can be added to verbs. If you learn, if you read my lesson number lesson 26, I talk about how you can describe. Uh, upcoming nouns, and that's what's happening here. I have a verb describing an upcoming noun using these particular things, and this is actually describing it in the past, and I highly suggest you read Lesson 26 to learn about how you can do this. It's very similar to, say, if I was going to make a simple, similar uh, idea in English, I would say, the food I ate, or sorry, the food that I ate, both would be the same, the food I ate and the food that I ate, the food that I ate, you're actually talking about the food. And again, this is not a full sentence, but you're just describing this food. Well, what food is it? Well, you're describing with this past tense verb. And this, the, well, what food is it? It's the food particularly that I ate. And that's a similar idea to what's happening here. You have a road. Well, what road is it? It's something to do with this verb. Now, what I find really interesting is the, the base form of this verb is actually kupta. kupta. Now, this is one of the a very difficult thing for for anybody to even wrap to, to wrap their heads around when they're learning Korean is there's actually two meanings of the word kupta and I, I don't want to say that there's two meanings of the same word because technically there are actually two words in Korean that look like this and the, the, this one is kupta and this one is kupta and they have the same sound and they technically you could say well they're the same word but they're not the same word one of them and the one that we have here is 
to be bent. To be bent. And it's actually a verb. It looks like an adjective, but it's actually a verb. That's a, a passive verb. So it, the, the fact that it's a verb doesn't really matter, but it, it is actually a verb. And the other, the other uh, meaning of this thing that looks like it's the same word, but again, it's actually not the same word, is to roast. To roast. And when I say roast, I mean sort of like food, like you're roasting meat or you're roasting a, a potato or something like that. Now, what's interesting is, as maybe you're aware, maybe you're not, but if you if you read my lesson, lesson number seven, it's probably as a beginner, it's probably the, one of the most difficult lessons to get over. And once you get over this hump, you're sort of free sailing. But it's a lesson on all the different irregulars. And there's all these different irregulars that I get into. And this one here is probably one of the most confusing to look at because it's, it doesn't really make sense at first to why why one particular letter would change into another letter. But I'll, I'll get into that in a second. So what's interesting is, even though these two things look the same, and they, they the stem, and let me get another color, this part here would be the stem, and I would that would not be part of the stem, and this is the stem, and this would not be part of the stem. They both have the same stem, which is just coop, and this is coop, and this is coop. Now, what's really interesting to me, and I know I'm a big Korean grammar nerd, but what's interesting to me is one of these follows, or sorry, one of these does not follow the Korean irregular, and one of these does follow the Korean irregular. And another way of saying that is, in in one of these situations, in one of these words, this this letter here, which is actually maybe I'll just write the name of the letter, so you know what I'm talking about when I refer to it. I'm gonna get some space. I'll write it down here. That the name of this letter, P. Uh, is just that's just the name of this of this letter. Just like if I had this, I would call that the letter A. But in English, this this letter here, the name of this letter is called P. So this particular verb does not follow the Korean the the Korean P irregular, and this one actually does. And what that means is, let me if, again, if you go to this lesson, you can see what happens if you if you follow the irregular or not, but. The the general idea is if something follows the Korean irregular, for example, if I have the word, um, if I have the word, uh, maybe we'll go 어렵다, 어렵다. This means to be difficult, and it's an adjective, but that doesn't matter. The fact that it's an adjective is irrelevant in this situation. To be difficult. If you want to attach a vowel, to this, what actually happens is the stem always gets eliminated, so I'm going to eliminate the stem. But this letter, the p, actually changes into this. And it's very, very confusing for people because how could this letter that sounds like a b, and it, it's not a b, but it sounds like a b, makes a b sound, how could this letter actually change into a vowel? And I, no, I don't want to get into why or how that happens, but it does. So if I was going to add a vowel, for example, if I was going to conjugate oryopta by adding, by adding, if I wanted to add this or this, that means that this, this letter here actually changes into this. And it, to make it even more confusing, that means that this addition, therefore, doesn't get connected to this looking stem with, with a B up here, but it actually gets connected to this, which also gets added onto that. And as you can imagine, this can be really confusing. And I, again, I really highly suggest you read this lesson to to understand fully what's going on here. But all in all, the finishing product would, or the finished product would, would look like this. Ah, the ah, ooh, and again, that's this, this part here is originally this letter, but it changed into this, this, this thing, this syllable. And then I have to add this to it. And I, I add this one because, I, I, well, I talked about this in, a, in, in an earlier lesson, but I, I have to add this to it. So I, I can add that to it. So audio that changes into audio wall. Now, with these two words here, kupta and kupta, in one situation, adding a, a vowel, adding an addition that starts with a vowel, causes this biup to change. And in the other situation, which is this one here, it doesn't cause it to change. So if I was going to, for example, if I was going to add this addition, if I was going to add this addition to both of these words, in this situation, I would get kupta. Because what happened here is I'm adding, in all situations, I'm going to add this because the final vowel before the stem is u, and therefore I have to add this. I talked about that in lessons four and five, so I recommend you read those. But if I was going to add this addition to this verb 
the final product looks like this. But if I was going to add this addition to this verb, because this this verb here, this this version of this word, again, they look like they're the same word, but they're not, this pu actually changes into u. So what I get is ku, and again, I, I don't write pu here because that's changed, and it actually changes into this, ku, u, and then this gets added to this, and you could just technically add it to the side, but usually you'd merge them, so it looks like that. So very, very interesting that the same looking verb actually gets conjugated in different ways. And in this situation, what the addition I'm adding is this. And, and more specifically, I'm adding this. Now, if I was going to add this one to this verb, again, just like you see here, what I would get is ku, ku, un. And if I was going to add this addition to this verb, what I would get is ku, and there's, again, this is where the p changed into this. And then, I w again, in this situation, I would have to think about, do I have to add this or do I have to add this? Well, now my stem, which is now changed, actually ends in a vowel. So I don't add this to, to this. I don't add, I don't add this one because it, I added, I added this in this situation where my stem ended in a, in a consonant, which is here. But in this situation, now that I'm talking about the one on the right, well, now my stem ends in a vowel. So I can't add this because that wouldn't fit on there. So what I have to do is I have to add this particular one. So if I was going to describe an upcoming noun with this verb or with this verb, it would actually look different. So in this situation, you see, and I'll, maybe I'll, well, okay, it means to be bent. So if I'm going to say kupun toro, where I'm describing an upcoming noun, this is saying a bent road or, or, or a, a road with a bend in it like you see here. But if I was going to describe an upcoming noun using this situation, I would have to do it like this. So for example, if I wanted to say a roasted or, or a cooked or a roasted potato or a sweet potato, I could say ko kuma, and that means sweet potato. In this situation, what I would have to do is conjugate it or add, add this so that it actually changes it and looks like this. And to me, this is really interesting, the fact that one particular word or one thing that looks like it's the same word, depending on its meaning, and one of the meanings is to be bent and the other meaning is to, be, to, to roast, depending on its particular meaning, you actually, it actually gets conjugated differently because of these two different things. And as you can imagine, that would be really confusing for a, a foreigner who's trying to learn Korean and to just try to get their head straight of what's going on here. Well, that was fun. I hope you learned a lot.